Greetings and welcome to another session of Speaking Through My World. Today I want to look at and unpack the importance as well as the danger of including ex-perpetrators or perpetrators in the fight to stop gender-based violence. And with this discussion, we of course need to also have a conversation around how we raise and educate our children, how we re-educate ourselves. Because remember, patriarchy and misogynistic ideologies have been driving all agendas for many, many, many centuries. So from women's rights to the way we see women to the way we don't see women to the lack of inclusiveness of, 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 of the LGBTQI community, uh, gender non-conforming people, uh, the marginalized, the minorities. And this re-education and unlearning needs to happen for all of us, you know, um, including people within the activism space who have been working um, uh, and understanding and unpacking the problems uh, around gender-based violence. And so starting with our children and, and with ourselves and with our home, what environment have we, have we created? Do we understand what gender means? Do we have specific roles um, for gender in our homes? Do we understand what gender inequality is about? Um, what woman empowerment about that is about and that it's not just about uh, tea parties during Women's Month or putting up a campaign um, during the 16 days of activism at the end of the year. So what conversations are we having with ourselves? How do we see ourselves? How are we not seeing ourselves? Are we speaking up for people when they're not in the room? Are we, are we speaking up for people when they are in the room? Or is it just face value? And why we need to have these conversations is that if you understand the, the impact of what abuse does to somebody's psyche, which affects their physiology, which affects the way they operate, it affects how we see the world, it affects how we, we see ourselves, um, and that any form of a trauma that happens in our bodies, yes, um, we can try and pick up the pieces afterwards, but our lives are never the same. And, and that is why psychosocial support and counseling and assistance is so important because it doesn't fix the problem, which was the trauma that was placed on you. It just provides coping mechanisms so that you can move on and get on with life. And so with the incorporation and the, the conversations that we need to have with ex-perpetrators or perpetrators, whatever, whatever def definition they want to give themselves, is that we need to be very, very careful on how we incorporate them into the conversation. Because for too long, the patriarchy has driven the narrative. And so for a perpetrator who has violated so many people, coming in to drive the narrative but not taking responsibility for the actions or acknowledging the actions or dismissing or undermining the actions is incredibly, incredibly problematic. And what constitutes a so-called type of rehabilitation? Uh, have they taken acknowledgement of, of their crimes through the court system? Have they turned themselves in as abusers or rapists or, or, or abusers, as I said? Or are they using the work of activists and, and, and NGOs within the space as a PR campaign? Or to save their brand because they know that their time is up and therefore adding money to so-called campaigns which are driven by women um, but then not much change has happened and if anything it's done a lot more damage especially to those that have been violated 
So it's a lot to, to, to unpack and we, and we need those conversations. And, and we need to understand that the conversation cannot be driven and the narrative cannot be driven by somebody who has not shown any remorse, that has not really taken any responsibility for their actions. And we need to be very careful with partners and partnerships and organizations who don't understand the impact of what such a partnership can do. Providing adequate support to those that speak out is also incredibly, incredibly important. Especially if you're running campaigns of we believe her or I believe her. We need to believe those who speak out against abuse. And also acknowledge the fact that abuse affects us in different ways. And so when the initial abuse takes place, for a lot of people, the obvious choice is to get out of that environment and away from a perpetrator. So if somebody comes to you and says, somebody just violated me in your living room and they want to leave. Yes, you can say, let's, let's approach the, the, the perpetrator. But if they say they just need to get out of that space, we need to respect that. Because when the violation happens, our body goes into trauma. So for some people, they shut down. For others, they just want to get out of the situation because they know the danger of what that person has already done and possibly incapable of doing again. Then the next step is to provide adequate support. Letting the person know that you believe them, not doubting them, not sending people to, to try and gaslight them and undermine them, and almost in another way blame them and then continue to promote and highlight this person that is supposedly reformed. So in closing, the question is, what are your intentions? Do we all understand the impact of what abuse does and the power that perpetrators have? because they know that the system, the patriarchal system, that is driven by misogyny and toxicity, will favor them and support them because it's been doing that for so many years. So in this fight, where are you standing? Is it about face value? Is it about brand? Is it about money? Or is it about protecting and supporting those that speak out and being part of the bigger picture to stop gender-based violence. Difficult conversations. Listen to those that have been working in the space for many, many years. And if you can't comprehend that, then at least listen to those that have spoken out. There are many survivors. There are many victims. We're dealing with people's lives. Because after the bruises go away, the emotional and the psychological uh, abuse and pain can live with us forever. So is it about face value, brand equity, lining our pockets? What is it really about for you? Because in the process, there are many many people who are dying silently. Thanks for listening.